Consumer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Lifting Solutions company SA French recently showcased its permanent and temporary lifting gear in an effort to show customers its potential in various sectors. Dylan Stater tells us more. SA French is the South African distributor of Bertain cranes and lifting solutions. One of these unique pieces of equipment is the Bertain IGO self-erecting crane, which can be remotely operated by a single person from ground level. SA French Managing Director Quentin van Breda explains the evolution of the concept of a self-erecting crane over the years and what this new model offers. Originally when they invented um, self-erecting cranes, they were wire erection or wire rope erection. Um, it was very good technically, but there were frequent accidents because there were so many things to watch at the same time. The number of sheaves and the condition of the rope, etc. etc. They then 12, 15 years ago invented the hydraulic self-erecting crane, which has um, completely revolutionized um, self-erecting trains. As you saw during the demonstration, um, one man with a remote control, um, three functions, perfectly safe, impossible to make a mistake while you're erecting, and, uh, it's, but it is fully hydraulic. It's not a combination of hydraulic and wire, as some other manufacturers have, it's fully hydraulic. The fundamental concept of a self-erecting crane lies in its ability to be easily transportable via road to any destination. In this regard, the Pertain IGO self-erecting cranes have been designed specifically to perform this task with ease and can be trailered to almost any site with decent road access. They've worked on the two predominant uh, things in the last number of years has been to reduce the height of a part of cranes on, on towing axles so that even in country areas you could get under lowish bridges up to 3.8 meters and also reduce axle loads. Um, axle loads um, critical throughout the world, um, 12 ton is, is, is the maximum can ever be registered even with permits. General run of the mill um, South African in excess of 8 tons. So it's to keep for our market keep the axle load under 8 tons which they've done um, which makes it, it makes it incredibly flexible. We could take, we could take a crane like the Argo 50 that you saw, um, and we could take it to Durban, comfortably, legally, um, to Durban. Um, very few other <coughs> items of, of, of lifting tackle that you could do that with. These cranes are relatively small and nimble, and therefore boast significant benefits in terms of being able to move around a site very easily, as opposed to larger, fixed tower cranes which can take several days to dismantle and even longer to reassemble. In the case of self-erecting cranes predominantly used on the sort of low-rise office block, apartment block, three, four stories is ideal. Um, and even on large complexes that are only three or four stories high, where you would effectively need five self-erectors when you looked at the job, but you can use the one and you can continue to move it. It's only a day for us to dismantle, move, re-erect. SA French also offers hoists, which can be used to transport personnel and light equipment vertically. Hoists, we're going to cover a far broader, broader industry. The industry we know and understand, which is construction and to a certain extent mining. Um, and outside of that, petrochemical, um, agricultural, particularly for um, grain and wheat silos throughout the country. All of them have to be serviced by, um, by personnel up on the top with their conveyors. <clears throat> Those would be permanent installations. Construction and mining would always tend to be a combination of permanent and temporary installations. Um, power stations, for example, um, need to have shutdowns um, every year. So there will be hoists that will be installed permanently on power stations. Um, but then during the construction phase, you might have 30, 40 hoists um, during the construction phase, as is the case at the moment of Madubi or Kusili. Um, our advantage um, relative to what else is available in the market, um, number one, which has become very pertinent in South Africa, we're cheaper. Um, we're cheaper, it's a Chinese product, um, and, and we, we, don't, we don't say Chinese and, 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 and sort of have to whisper it. Um, Chinese make wonderful range of equipment. We believe we're in the top end, um, that it's comparable to anything European. And furthermore, it's, uh, they're faster. So in, on, on a cycle within an hour, material, personnel, 
um, our product, we can move twice as many people um, and material as any as, as currently opposition. Other news making headlines this week, universal electrification and necessity for Africa. The African continent must ensure universal access to electricity to resolve energy poverty, Energy Security Services Africa MD Gareth Gregory has said. Unfortunately, we already have five decades of a case study that clearly shows with too much government involvement, things don't move all that quickly. Very few people benefit from that, and it's certainly not the masses. And that's clearly represented in the level of energy poverty that we're experiencing across the African continent. So as far as government's involvement go, they do play a critical role, but they, all they should be doing is setting a sensible direction. At the end of the day, the market needs to drive that needs to push it forward, your private sector needs to be involved in that market in actually formulating a sustainable structure. And once again, uh, we don't want to use the word sustainable too, too broadly and too freely. We need to get down to basics, we need to get onto the ground, and we need to get communities electrified. One way or another, centralised or even decentralised energy generation. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.